G'day viewers and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Blokes World and this episode is proudly brought to you by Nappy Sand. Check it out. <laughs> oh look, actually you changed all your gear, I'm the only manky one. But today is day four of our ride and we're heading up to check out a Huey. Tell us what's happening today, Dave. Uh, we're going to do a short ride, for about 50 k's to the Huey today. Yep. Then we've probably got another 100 back into Pai. Excellent. Now Pai is probably the biggest town we'll see besides Chiang Mai on this ride, huh? Yes, it'll be the biggest town. We've got plenty of walking streets. Yep. So it's very populated because it's so close to Chiang Mai. Yeah. Awesome. Can't wait for this. But anyway, enough of the big talk. We've got so much to put in this episode. Let's start the bikes and the episode. Enjoy. It's just like my surfing. I've surfed for a long time, but I wouldn't go surf 30 foot pipeline with my mates. And that's exactly what today was in dirt bike terms. Okay, uh, just arrived back after day, uh, I don't even know what day it is. Three, three, four, four. Yeah, day four. Another uh, absolutely superb run, 130 clicks off, uh, mostly off road. Well, this morning we took off from the Lod Cave and um, didn't have much places to stop today, so we had to load up. Uh, we got a few snacks. Most of the boys did the same, grabbed a heap of snacks, and then uh, we set off for the day. We basically, this is probably the biggest day off-road uh, for all of us, definitely, by far. Basically, we only probably did about five or 10 minutes of bitumen, and then we were off-road probably 98% of the day, so it was really, really fun. The boys are pretty tired now. It's an intermediate ride. It's uh, not like for a, a very basic beginner you'd need to be some sort of intermediate. So it'll be challenging at some points, but it's pretty dry. So we shouldn't have any issues with any, any of us not getting up there. Pretty nice enduro today, I have to say. There were pretty um, gnarly tracks up there and we were heading to a chopper. It's a crest chopper and on the mountain. And yeah, actually it was kind of 20 Ks to that chopper, but uh, it took a long time. Here comes Leon, he's having a ball. Some good rutted single today, to start off with. He's going the hard way. He's eating it for breakfast. The trails there were pretty uh, washed out of the rainwater and just uh, all the roots came out from the trees and they were pretty big holes. You, have, you had to watch out really good because uh, you get jammed up in there and you can't get outside of those rods anymore, you know, and you just fall down, like, not, not like holes like one meter, there are actually holes three meters deep and something. And yeah, it was kind of fun to ride in there. Yeah, and of course it was fun to watch all the other riders <laughs> trying to cope with uh, those technical steps and everything. And yeah, Chris and me, uh, we were having lots of, lots of fun um, going on a bit and then Finding some difficult trails and going for the going for the hard trails, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. We did probably about oh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Really nice, just single track, um, sweeping and, and swerving through some nice pine forest top. Ah, it's all happening there. Hit neutral. Hit the horn. Hit the hangers. <laughs> We caught Ado napping probably oh, at least four times. Ado! Crashed! 
Um, we've got it all on footage. It's, it's excellent. Uh, he did really well the first one, but as soon as he dropped the bike the first time, he sort of hit a brick wall. He, he fell over the next 20 metres up. And I was struggling a bit, had a big night last night and struggling a little bit. And then I'm thinking, oh yeah, I've got this dialed in. And then Dave stops and goes, right, this is where it gets hard. And I just went, well, what was that? Oh, here he goes. Ado's <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> on a roll. That's the way you do it. Check that out. Oh, All right, we're back with more Bikes World after these messages. What do you reckon? Mm. Not a bad show, eh? <laughs> Welcome back to Blokes World in Thailand. We're heading north through the bush to the town of Pai. And you're riding with Leon Strasser, the crazy Austrian. I did lead the two guns for a while. Every now and then, you just want to let go and you, and you go nuts. So, you know, you take the chance that you're going to lose a bit of bark. Yeah, so they're incentive to me because when they took off behind me, I sort of said to myself, I said, self, <laughs> this is not going to be pretty. But uh, I, give, I give it a fair go and yeah, they paid a compliment, so it pleased me. You're, you're flying, my... Russ. Hey? You're flying on that track. Yeah. Oh, I let go your bike, yeah. I let go every now and then. Um, we got through some forest sections, so you get the tree roots, you get the washed out ravines, some really gnarly stuff. Yeah, it, it's um, it's quite sketchy, but I've um, I've been been through there about five or six times, so I, I know what to expect. So I I tend to ride within my limit, you know. I cross ride it on that log, and I'm. Whoa! <laughs> what is Chris doing? Oh, that is doing. Whoa! And it just went. <laughs> I had seven crashes today, so that's that's a new record for me. And I'm driving along thinking, you know what? I'm finally going to take out a title on this tour. Best crash. And from nowhere, Chris Warwick has just come in. We're on this trail, and Chris, uh, Chris Warwick, and Leon were doing an Erzberg line. And he came flying down in front of me. He's, I think his back wheel just hit a, hit a rock and he just flew into this log. Oh. And it was like a log that was laying on the ground that had all the, these branches cut off and his head just went bang in between these two branches. Oh, I know that was a big hit. That was a big hit. Oh, his arms. You all right? Oh, you hit it hard, all right? You all right? Yeah, I'm right. It happens when I'm showing off. <laughs> and so that kind of was a bit of a wake-up call. So then we got back on the bikes, and then all of a sudden, from going from real tacky, it was nice and tacky, it went into this real, it's virtually like concrete, 
this clay was just concrete and it had like gravel that was like kind of like ball bearings. All you had to do was just touch your front brake and the whole bike would just completely wash out on you. So I came flying uh, around this one corner, you know, what you probably won't see on the GoPro because it was facing me, but to your right, it was a good 200 metre drop down this cliff. And so I was doing everything to stay on this side. And I came flying around this corner, you know, and just, I don't know what happened. I think I was just a bit dehydrated and a bit foggy in the head and just took a really bad line. And then just had a panic moment and just pulled the front brake and the front tire just started just sliding. And um, I leant over and as it slid, I just went straight into the bankment, cracked my head on the wall and kind of just laid there for a bit because I just couldn't believe how full on it was. And then from nowhere, Dave's come up and picked me up and stuff. And I'm so glad he did because if I laid there anymore, there were cars. There were just cars coming through there. And so it was great going on these tours because you've got a lead guy, you've got a point guy. You've got guys that are, you know, from different school levels scattered throughout the pack, which is great because I need them around me. Um, and we, yeah, moseyed on uh, up to the, uh, the famous uh, chopper, the uh, crashed Huey helicopter, which, according to David, crashed in 2009. But by my reckoning, it was 2011. So we'll confirm that later, and he can buy the beer. Well, I don't want to get in the way of anyone's beer, but I reckon Dave might have done his research because he's sent us this footage of the actual crash. It's not really a crash, it's more of a hard landing. It's sort of intact, but there's lots of people been scavenging off it and taking bits and pieces of souvenirs. It's really cool just to see, you know, how many people have visited. You know, a lot of people have etched their names into it and um, a couple of cool stickers on there from, from tour groups. Definitely something I won't forget. And uh, the boys are behind me now looking, taking parts off for souvenirs. Man, it's absolutely awesome. Anyway, right now let's cut in and see what Camus 3's up to. Viewers, the uh, support team has pulled into Pi. A bit ahead of the bikes, they're out there checking out uh, helicopters and stuff. So we thought we'd come and have a late afternoon. Bit of stir fry. Check this out. I've been out in the countryside with Kate. Been filming some landscape shots, like this one. And this one. And this one, and nearly lost the drone, that's all right, not meant to have it anyway here in Thailand. Three, one, two. Three, one, two, and we'll be right back after this outbreak of verbal diarrhea. Happy days, Alan. <laughs> Welcome back to Blokes World in Thailand. We're here riding through the north of the country with a ripping little tour company called Enduro Tours Thailand. Accept no substitutes, because apart from knowing all of the bush trails like the back of their hands, they can also show you cool stuff before and after your ride. And for us, that included a local Muay Thai tournament in Chiang Mai. You know what, I'd like to tell you where we're going, but the first rule is I can't talk no, about it. No, you can't. You can't talk about it. 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 That's the first rule. Yeah, I called the viewers. Red one. Just want myself 30 bucks, might lay out another bet. Man, these girls make it blue. Come on, love. Smack right there. And then, after a few more bouts, they got five young guys and put them in the ring, blindfolded, and they just started laying into each other. This is the best thing I've ever seen. There's five guys in the ring, they're all blindfolded. <laughs> they're all blindfolded, they've got nothing. Just walking around. And the board ref! The board ref keeps getting smashed. <laughs> Oh, 
stay classy, Chiang Mai. But anyway, now let's get back on the bikes and see what the boys are up to as they head in to the town of Pai. After the Huey, we uh, got a move on up the trail and one point there, it was probably about 20 minutes in, I lost the front end and um, I didn't crash, luckily, and, but I completely lost the front end and I was like, I wasn't uh, overdoing it, I wasn't out riding the bike like I have been the, the, probably the past three or four crashes or near misses, but um, yeah, I, I lost the front end and I was like, oh, that's, that's probably going to catch a few people out, you know, that's, that's uh, something that was out of my control. Managed to catch it and move, keep going down the trail, move on. And then uh, we got to the next little waiting stop and Dave's got the, the first aid kit out. Ado's got his sleeve half rolled up. So we're like, oh no, what's he done now? Wasn't over yet, we still had a, a fair bit to go. So I was a bit worried for Ado, he was just looking a, a bit worse for wear and, and I was starting to feel my head started throbbing because I've, I've hit the head, my head pretty hard in my crash. It was probably another 15 k's I reckon of off-roads. And, uh, and so then, yeah, we just cruised through there, made it back down that hill, and then, um, thank God, we made it in a town. I had a lot of close calls, of course, a lot of near misses, and a lot of those moments, you are just getting awake again. <laughs> but uh, I'm very lucky till now. Kind of embarrassing, because on the second day, I said, you aren't riding when you aren't crashing, you know? So i got to start riding now, I guess. Don't go anywhere, viewers, because after the break, the boys finally hit the town of Pi. G'day and welcome back to Blokes World. We're at the end of day four of our five-day dirt bike tour with Enduro Tours Thailand. The tour started in the city of Chiang Mai, and today the guys are rolling into the second largest town we'll visit, Pi. Yeah, so we just arrived to our digs and we are the walking dead. Ted said, I need a Zimmer frame. <laughs> and it's not getting any prettier as the hours go on. But we're about to do a logy shoot, so I've got to be quiet. So we're into Pi, we, we are out of the mountains and we might be only five kilometres out. But as we're riding through, you get to see all the rice fields, lots of uh, uh, residential homes are there as well. A good kilometre or so would be rice fields that you get to see. A bit green today. So it was all good. And uh, lots of um, apartments, holiday homes, all sorts of guest houses, bed and breakfasts. So we're very close to town. We get to see uh, the main river next to town. We go over the bridge and then we're straight into like Walking Street. But that doesn't get closed until uh, seven, eight o'clock at night. And then all the pedestrians pretty much take over. It's probably the most popular tourist um, destination outside of Chiang Mai. We're actually located in the Pai Valley. Uh, we're, so we're surrounded by mountains. Um, it's on the uh, Mei Hong Son Pai loop from Chiang Mai. So there's a lot of bikers coming through this place. Great restaurants, great nightlife, and, and a really good um, night market with um, food stalls. But it, it's been a long day. Today's been easily our biggest day of riding. You know, I pulled up and um, <laughs> I said to Russell, come on, man, we've got to go do some drone shots. And he went, how many? <laughs> and I said, oh, no, no they'll take, <laughs> this won't take long. So we bumped into you, camera three, and you got the drone up and we were doing a couple of passes. And then I said to Russell, come on, man, we've just got this bridge shot of us driving into town and it'll look brilliant. He'll go, yeah, okay, but we're not doing the one coming back. I think camera three just diagnosed me with dehydration and everything else and heat stroke. So I'm not in 100% at the moment, but I'll come good as soon as somebody shows me beer. I've done it a couple of times in the wet and the dry, and when it's like that, it's, it's pretty hard work. It's not easy. If you, some parts, I mean, you can ride all day in some of the tracks we go on, but then you hit days like this and you know you've done it at the end of the day. Even the, the guns, they were down a couple of times. It was fairly gnarly stuff to, to, to climb through, you know, but it was cool. I had a bit of a go up front for a while because I was eating dust for so long, so up the back. He was, you know what he was like? He was like when, you know, when you go around a horse and the horse can just plod around all day. And as soon as that horse knows that the ride's over and sees the stables, it bang, it's gone. So he was back in here, showered, manicured, and ready for a photo shoot while we were all pulling up, so. It's been a big day for all of us, you know. Everyone ate it today. I think Leon was probably the only one who didn't eat it. But um, 
man, he was sketchy. He was so sketchy. And I, after my, my off, I halved my speed. I cracked my glasses. <laughs> so that was another thing. I rode blind for about four hours. But, um, you know, it's just great to get back to the hotel. Just had a shower and left a ring around the floor. And, um, yeah, now we're just going to sit down, chill out, have some beers and wait for the bruises to come up. Yes, apart from that, um, just a good day. I think the young blokes had a, had a really good day today. They, they got to stretch their legs and stretch everything and have a good time. Yeah, the trail's absolutely awesome. The single was, was incredible. Me and Leon played around for a good hour or so, had a bit of a play around and just let the boys catch their breath. Me and Leon sort of went on a bit of a trek for ourselves and found some nice singles up and down hills. And... Oh, this is so much fun. Yeah. But those thorns aren't that much fun. <laughs> 